everyone, what's up? This is Simon from Galaxies.dev and in this quick tutorial I'm gonna show you how you can capture images with your React Native applications both from the photo library or from the camera, store them using the file system and then also add functionality so you can delete the files or even upload them to a remote server. In our case we're gonna use a simple PHP script and a static page where we can render the images but this is just an example. You could upload your files of course to any other API and with this functionality you should be able to pre much solve all the problems of your applications if it comes to image upload and storing files. As always you can also find the written version of this tutorial linked below the video on galaxies.dev and if you become a member for free you should also be able to connect to our github repository and check out all the code. So without further ado let's create our react native image upload with expo. Alright so let's get started with our application. I started with the expo template typescript so we're gonna have typescript in our application and then I added two plugins. In. So I installed the Expo Image Picker and the Expo File System. So let me quickly show you those. This is the Image Picker. So that Image Picker is a bit better than just using the camera because it allows us to either access the library or use the camera. And the file system plugin will help us to store the files in our application. Now, you could also use something like the media library, but that would only write the image to the actual media library of the user. And sometimes you want to keep those files just in the application in the user's document. And that's exactly what we're going to do. This is usually a bit more challenging, but it's also a more private way to handle your images. So once you've done this, you should have a new application and to actually give those plugins permission and if you may be using the expo uh, build services later you can go to your app json and add an object for plugins and within have an array with the expo image picker and the photos permission and the camera permission so this will be then used in your application to request the permissions once the user needs to uh, use the camera or the library. And then uh, also ran npx expo that will simply bring up uh, your debugging capabilities and then you can press I for the iOS simulator or use your uh, device with expo go application. I got everything set up. So here we go. Here's my app.tsx. We're going to talk about the PHP upload script in the end, um, but you could also simply have a different way um, to, uh, yeah, well, backend could be anything basically. So here we go. Uh, let's begin by making sure that our image directory in the application exists. And for that, I had a little snippet, uh, which I found in the expo docs. So let's start with this one. Um, we also need to add the file system now. So do we already have the file system? No, we don't. So here we go. And a star as file system. And then we create our image directory by using the document directory. Now you could use different others in the example that we're using a cache directory. Um, there's also what is there as well bundle directory and something but usually the document directory is a good place for user generated files of your application. And I'm also adding images just to make sure that like we have an images folder. And then this function will always be called to make sure that the folder actually exists. So we try to get the information. If it doesn't exist, I'm going to create that folder and also all uh, intermediary folders. With that in place, let's continue. So when the app starts, um, I do want to load all the images, but we don't really have any kind of image. So maybe let's start with the select image functionality. Uh, it's going to be an async function exactly and within the select image I want to use the image picker so we don't even haven't added the image picker let's add this as well uh, so we got the image picker and then to pick an image we can simply call uh, let's just use the copilot snippet and check uh, if this is correct um, this is actually wrong it is not cancelled anymore it is just cancelled and you sometimes still get a deprecation warning but this is the way to uh, see that you actually have a result so we use image picker launch image library async and then we select which types are available to pick so in our case we'll just say images um, now let's quickly add a button for this so in my view I will simply add another view instead of the text here uh, let's add an image, uh, a little view like this. So a uh, row with flex styling, a bit of margin, nothing fancy and two buttons for the photo library and to capture an image because we can actually do both of them pretty easily uh, by simply having a little boolean in here. Uh, otherwise we'd have to use two functions and let's just say 
Uh, this is the Boolean if we want to use the image library. Um, and therefore we can change this a tiny bit because the calls are pretty much the same. So let's say uh, let result, we're going to define this upfront. Then we're going to check if we want to use the library. In that case, we will use exactly this snippet here. So result equals this snippet. And in the other case, uh, Copilot will give us exactly launch camera async. And I had some problems with the permissions in this case. So if you have problems with permissions, you're going to see this in the log if there's an error. Uh, I would recommend you just add image picker request camera permissions async. It won't hurt because it's only requesting permissions once. If you have the permissions, it will simply finish immediately. Uh, and you can also, of course, check the result of that call to see if you have the permissions. Otherwise, this won't work. But now we do have the differences here. Um, and as we see, uh, we can have some options as well. So let's define these options because you see, this is actually the same. And we can use stuff like aspect ratio in here, uh, or we could have the quality defined in here. So all these things could actually be bundled simply in one options object. So let's use the images, allow editing, and the quality is changed a bit. And I'm just simply replacing what we passed to the function in both places with options. And now the whole function just becomes a lot more uh, readable. Uh, at this point, let's just lock out result dot um, assets at the position zero URI. This is where we got the actual URI of the file. So let's try this out on our simulator. The capture image won't work here because it's a simulator, but photo library should actually use. Uh, I can actually edit it. I can pick it and we see we got a URI to a file. Perfect. This is all you need. This is actually a good start. Um, can I do the same on my device? Yeah, I should be able to do this. So here's my device. Uh, I can just snap a picture, use that photo and then probably I'm going to see, yeah, I'm going to see another lock in the locks. Cool. So at this point, we need to save our image. So let's create a function to save the image. Uh, const save image is going to be an async function as well, to which we pass our URI. So that means save image with our URI result at that point. Now, as I said before, I want to make sure that my folder exists. So I'm going to call ensure directory exists. Then this is kind of optional, but I will do just a new file name. Uh, let's use file name equals new date get time plus JPEG. Uh, because otherwise the file names are actually like if you just split up the URL or the URI, you're going to see this would be the name of the file. And I just kind of want to have a, a bit more readable file. We could also have like an input for the file, but actually does anybody care about the name of a file at anymore? I don't know. So our destination will be my image directory, which we defined up here. So document directory slash images slash the name of our file. And with that in place, we can use the file system plugin, which we installed before to copy from our URI to our destination. And that should create our file in the best case. Now, uh, as we do this, we also want to add this to an array of images. So let's add a state here uh, loading yeah loading can't hurt as well um, and once we copied over the file we're going to add this to our images using all the images we currently have and then also add the new image and this already gives you a little little spoiler to what we're going to do of course we can also load the images right here if we're using use effect um, i can yeah i could either do it like this and i actually want to do this in a different way uh, copilot so making sure I got the empty array here and I'm going to add a new function uh, load images uh, in which I'm going to uh, first of all, yeah, that's mostly correct. But I also want to ensure that the directory exists up front. So await this and that close the function and make sure that we call load images in here. OK, so. Uh, on startup, we want to load the images. We check that the directory exists or we create it. Then we grab the files. And if the uh, files.length is bigger than zero, 
we're gonna uh, add all the images to our images array by mapping the files and attaching the image directory in front because otherwise you just had this relative URL and by adding our image directory in front of it, we have the absolute URL. And at that point, well, we don't really need loading. Um, at that point, we can, we can actually display this. We should be able to now render this. Let's try this out. Um, so we have captured some information. Uh, let's just use, I don't know, let's just use a scroll view for the moment. And let's just um, go map through all the images. So images.map. And for every image, I just want to use what Copilot gives me for a second. So here we go. I have a scroll wheel with all the stored images. And um, same, by the way, on my phone. Uh, where's my instance of a phone? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I made some some fun with a, a simulator before. Uh, so these are the stored images that we are now already loading. And whenever we capture something new, it will be added to this list. And with that in place, we can now build out the rest of the functionality, which is to upload and delete those images. So the capturing and the storing of images and the representation does work. We can confirm that and you should also confirm this at this point. Um, and so now we can do this um, in a bit different way. So uh, let's say we're going to have a little text here for my images and then we're going to render a flat list below this. Now, if you've used a flat list before, you know that you usually need a function to render the different items. Uh, we first of all need to pass in the data. We don't really need a key extractor today. Uh, we only need that render item and we're going to do our own function. Thank you for the completion copilot. Uh, that was more than I required. So our render item function will be our own function. So let's call this render item. Uh, this function will get an item exactly. And I want to represent or I want to show the name of that item. So the name of the image and also the image itself. If I just do it like this uh, and then pass in render item here, I assume, yeah, it already would work just like this. Uh, not too bad, but that's not really what I want to do. So I want to get the file name. So I'm going to split the URL and then I'm going to add a few more things to the view. So what I want to see here is um, some Ionicons that we can easily import from the export vector icons. So let's add this at the top, the Ionicons import for vector icons. Um, and then we're going to attach two functions. One will be the upload, second will be to delete an image. And we haven't added those functions yet, but they are actually pretty easy to implement, especially delete image. Deleting the image is just uh, checking once again, or oh, actually we don't really need to check for the uh, for the file system because at that point we should have it. We just need to call delete async with a URI and then filter out our image. The upload image is a bit more complicated. So this is actually the funny and interesting part we're going to have to talk about. So we have three images. I could of course add another one just like this and it will be added to my list. Now, how do I upload this anywhere? To understand how our upload in this scenario works, let me quickly show you the PHP script I created. Now, I'm far from a PHP expert. Actually, I don't know anything about PHP, but I had this script which works pretty great. You could also create this with Copilot, I guess. So this will just use a file uh, and move an uploaded file from uh, the upload into an uploads folder. Um, so next to those scripts, uh, make an uploads folder and also I do have an index PHP which scans my uploads folder and renders some stuff. So here is an HTML uh, which I deployed using MAMP. So if you don't know, uh, you can easily use MAMP and under htdocs you can then have your index PHP, the upload, or it could be in a subfolder. Uh, or you could use XAMPP or you could actually use any other kind of web server. This is just really just an example of uh, how this could work. So you don't really need to put this in your React Native folder. You need to put this in your uh, web hosting or wherever you have a server. But this will be used for our testing and I'm going to use my local IP to upload files. So if I now want to upload any of these files, I'm going to first of all set my uploading or set loading to true. 
And then I'm gonna call the file system plugin because the file system plugin actually gives us a way to upload a file using an async request. Um, I wanna use the HTTP method post. Uh, the upload type should be multi-part and my file name in my scenario is file. This might be different for your API. Just be aware of that. Uh, and also I'm gonna set my loading back to false. Now, this is of course the wrong URL. In my case, what I wanna use as the URL would be this. So, uh, my IP, uh, this is usually using port 8888 uh, if you're using MAMP or XAMPP and then upload PHP or it could be your node API, or it could be any other API. The thing is, file system upload async just needs the URL to the remote uh, the remote URL where the file will be sent and the local URI of the file. And that's all we need, including a few options to upload that file. Now, while we're uploading, let's also render a little loading here. So I found this nice little gem, by the way. Um, this is uh, using a view with a style sheet absolute fill, which just fills it and we see it shows this nice little loading indicator. So uh, my loading in the beginning should actually be false when the page loads, so there we go. And at this point we are ready. So here's my server, no image yet. Let's try and upload some of these. Oh, that was a very short upload. And it appears in here. And now I can also use my application and upload this one. This might take a bit longer. But voila, there we go. Or I could also upload my Clash of Clans styling and the file is here. So we do have the file name based on the date it was created. Um, and all the files are now as well in the uploads directory here uh, of my server. So that means we are now able to basically, or let me, let me try this, how fast this works. So we have nothing. Let's capture an image. I'm capturing this image. I'm zooming into it, I'm using it, it shows up, I upload it, and it's here. This is how fast we can do upload. I can of course also remove all of them and they would be gone from my application. And this is pretty much all you need to know about uploading. So it's really just about using the URI, writing the URI to the file system when we got the images using save image. Uh, so using copy async from one URI to a destination. Deletion is easy and uploading works as well with a file system. Yes, you could use fetch. Yes, you could use Axios, but it's working great with a file system to upload files. So give it a try and hopefully this will work for you as well. All right, and that's it for today's tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this quick walkthrough of how you can upload images with React Native to your server, to Node, to Java, to Python, to whatever it might be, or it could also be PHP as we've seen. So it's really easy, just store the files, just use the URI and the file system plugin is really, really powerful. So check it out. Let me know if you got any questions in the comments and of course, check out galaxies.dev for more React Native content. I will hopefully catch you in the next video and until then of course epic coding